already out there, it's just not evenly distributed. Uh, there's certainly clear what the challenges are going to be for us in, in 2020, and I think that's the focus of the work that we're doing in trying to prepare, prepare, off, prepare ourselves for what's going to come. We identified six areas that are challenges for us in, the, in, the, in a way they'll, they'll be probably reality in, in 2020, and we need to react to this. Uh, the first one is that we need to do a lot more with less or the same. My budgets are not going to go to increase dramatically overnight. I know this. Uh, I've just come out of my budget negotiations for our next fiscal year. Uh, you grow 5%, maybe you get 2% more. That's the game because we also want to increase our profitability. So um, the need for more diversified investments, reaching consumers with more touch points, but at the same time doing this with less money, certainly requires for us to understand dramatically better where the RIs and where I'm reaching the right people. And this is, uh, I would say, the tools that we have at hand, marketing, mixed modeling, etc. cetera, uh, obviously digital, obviously much more instant tools, they still feel in the infancy and they're still quite blunt. So I think we're, we're at least in our industry, we're, we're right at the beginning of recognizing that and we're wasting still way too much money, a lot too much money. My business is certainly spent on, I want, in, want to be in the first three pages of Vogue, but that doesn't necessarily make sense, even though it feels good. Uh, the second piece um, is the idea about, we talked about relevancy and, and, and content creation is, so many brands first need to find a voice and determine what their voice is going to be. And uh, working in the, in, 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 in the luxury business, uh, luxury is often associated with, with a degree of mystery. So a lot of fashion brands and, and brands that we represent don't talk, they don't have a voice. They've never talked because it's all about the model or the catwalk. So suddenly, and we just launched a makeup range for, for, Cal, for the Calvin Klein brand under the CK1 umbrella. CK1 has never talked. I think the only time we talked was Kate Moss in the very first ad, and that was three lines. So what's the tone of voice? What language are we using? Are we funny? Are we serious? And we hired a copywriter just recently just to explain and work out with her, yeah, how do we sound when we speak? That's a challenge for us, certainly, and this is something we need to evolve as we're creating contents. Other brands are certainly in a better place, uh, but for us, it's a particular challenge. Um, three, again, something that has been managed, um, the need for relevance and personalization with, on the other side, us coming, and, and many people in the industry coming from uh, uh, a history of a heavily researched and century developed campaign and campaigns, and this is where clearly uh, we need to discover what for us, what are the right IT and data solutions are. And I think they will be quite different per industry. They will be uh, quite different for, for your specific goals. But um, we haven't found yet what I would call the sophisticated content creation and content management capabilities that are right for us. And that certainly is going to be a challenge for us in the next eight years because, or seven years. Because by 2020, we need to be ready, and certainly ahead of this, but by, at latest by that point, we need to be ready to do all those things that we're talking about today, but very, very few companies are doing it in, in, in an efficient way. But, um, number four, and I think Cheryl, you mentioned to this, the change of aesthetics, uh, something that we feel somewhat good about it because we're already there, but it feels there seems to be, uh, um, consumers are becoming more discerning with regards to design and imagery and overall look of brands and even, I mean, just open a home design magazine, you know, appliance makers, the way they're advertising now, what they're spending behind the production values of their communication. It's mind boggling if you compare that um, to how that even looked um, five or ten years ago. So this increased luxurization of many walks of life certainly puts further pressure on the way we work on our clients because we're being, again, we're being asked to do better with the same means, but also in agencies that need to learn. And uh, it's every time I try to hire an agency that's not coming out of the beauty business, I see that. So there's certainly the step to be made and what's the right mix, what's the right view for the aesthetics. That's a challenge. It's going to be a challenge for many brands that are not dealing with that today. Number five, um, almost done. Um, the whole, again, coming back to, to authenticity and, and um, relationship. Um, consumers have very little trust in anything these days and, and we as brands, uh, Generally, you know, I would say most of our brands coming with a kind of neutral setting and, and it's, it's certainly a, um, realistic to build the trust, but we've seen many, many cases how quickly that trust can be destroyed and uh, how consumers are taking things in their own hand. I just read one thing as it came up on a, on a travel blog where a woman found something in a hotel room that shouldn't be there. She complained the manager didn't deal with it the right way, but she tweeted to a friend. That tweet made the rounds all the way to the Hilton management, and the Hilton management called the general manager, and within it, I think within 12 hours, 
things were taken care of, even though she didn't complain that much to this team. It showed you how that circle of trust certainly is reshaping itself. And then the last piece, um, that's again something for, for a company like us who are traditionally manufacturer. Um, we need to be learn to become a retailer as well. Um, our, um, just go into a department store in the United States and you see how, how exciting these places are or not and how very few people are going to these places and other people are taking over and for us certainly this whole idea of selective distribution we can choose the retailer the retailer will show our brands in the most magnificent and most flattering place uh, that's been destroyed because if you want to buy a cheap fragrance you go to cheapfragrances.com and our brands don't look good there but they're cheap so we need to start taking things in our own hand we're doing this with uh, more integrated e-commerce solutions so we're becoming retailers that's, as an organization, we need to learn. I think by 2020, virtually every manufacturer will be in that virtually integrated space. So six challenges, literally, that when, when talking about this topic and thinking about this topic came to my mind. Uh, we're doing things around this. Um, I like the idea, why, what you called um, uh, fail quickly. We actually call fail cheaply. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> sometimes it's much quicker than you want it to be. But it's, how much money do I lose with this? So we call it well, three E's, so experimentation, education, and, and evolving. Um, there are mantras that we need to instill in our industry. My industry is particularly full of people that have been there for a long time, so preparing those people for change uh, and senior management for change is sometimes a challenge. We need to hire different people um, with much broader backgrounds, but they still have the feel for the aesthetics for the brands that we're representing, and it's, uh, it's gonna be a wild ride. Thank you. <laughs>